is most of the 25 offices. Hi, this is Eric Slack, Senior uh, Analyst with Storage Switzerland, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to talk about object storage with Russ Kennedy, VP of Product Strategy from Cleversafe. Hi, Russ. Thanks for coming by. Hi, Eric. Good to be here. Thanks. Um, Russ, as you know, object storage or an object storage, object-based architecture stores data in discrete containers called objects, and this abstraction really produces some unique characteristics. Um, one of those is uh, what you guys call data or information dispersal. Can you explain information dispersal and kind of contrast that with, with traditional storage architecture? Sure. Happy to, Eric. Uh, let me start with traditional storage okay, first, cool. and then we'll go into the information dispersal and, and show how it's different. But today, or with, with most storage systems today, data comes in from an application into the storage system like this, and generally it's striped across a number of drives in, a, in an array kind of format. There's parity that's calculated, mm -hmm. and that's how data is written to a storage system today. That works just fine for, for most applications. But what happens is if something fails, let's say a drive fails or something like that, something goes mm -hmm. offline, what has to happen is this information has to be reconstituted from the contents of the parity drive and the other drives before, let's say, another drive fails. Mm -hmm. And if another drive fails, then you don't have enough information to rebuild that stripe of data or that piece of mm -hmm. data. So you could end up losing information. With a traditional rate system. With a traditional rate system, okay. correct. So what do people do? They compensate for that by making a copy. So they make a second copy and another array of their data. And that's good enough if you have the second copy and you still have the same kind of striping mechanism and parity, let's say. But if you've got a large amount of data, let's say you have you know, a petabyte or more of information, that's not going to necessarily protect you very well because of the failure rate of disk drives. So people might make a second or a third copy of their data on another array, and okay. they may make a fourth copy of their data on tape just to protect it. So you're talking about four times the amount of information just to store it, just to protect it from you know, general failures like disk drive failures. So if I can jump in here, so you're saying then that traditional RAID systems have to use replication and a number of copies, a pretty inefficient process to provide the kind of resiliency that they need? Is reliability that... and availability is what we're talking okay. about, and that's exactly right. In order to get levels of reliability and availability that make sense for the kind of information that people are processing today, mm -hmm. you have to make multiple copies. And that's just to protect the data from you know, normal failures, normal uh, disk drive failures, or normal, normal conditions that happen in the world today. Okay. So if we could contrast that with information dispersal, let me talk about what information dispersal is. Okay. So, in an information dispersal system, data comes into what's called an information dispersal algorithm. Okay. And what that algorithm does, it essentially applies some mathematics to the data. It expands the data, it transforms the data, it slices the data, and then it disperses the data across mm -hmm. a network of storage nodes that could exist in a cloud just like this. So rather than striping data across drives like RAID, it's going to go through this process with every piece of information that comes into the system. The data is generated in such a way mm -hmm. that if there is a failure, if something fails in the environment, you don't necessarily need to have that piece in order to put the data back in its original form. And in fact, what dispersal does is it gives you the ability to set the levels of reliability and availability for your information that traditional RAID systems don't allow you to do. Traditional RAID systems are RAID 5, which is single parity, RAID 6, which is dual parity, mm -hmm. and then you have to make copies to go beyond that. Information dispersal gives you the ability to set levels of reliability that are significantly different than a traditional RAID system. Okay, and so you say you don't have to have that one specific piece. Are you saying then that reliability levels are, are related to the number of, of redundant chunks or so, so pieces it's, that you have? It's or? not redundancy. Okay. It's slicing and dispersing of the data. Let me explain it a little bit differently okay. here. So in an information dispersal system, you have a container, a logical container. Mm -hmm. Let's just draw it like a, you know, a logical disk drive, if you will. There are certain properties that you establish with the data that you're going to store. In this example, we have nine slices of data that are going to be generated and, and spread out or dispersed across mm -hmm. the network. We call that a width of nine. Okay. There's a minimum number of those slices that are necessary to put the data back in its original form. 
we call that a threshold, and let's say the threshold is five. So it's a width of nine and a threshold, threshold of, five, of five. Five being the minimum number you need minimum to number reconstitute you need to put the data, the data back set. in its okay. original form. What that means is that at any point in time, simultaneously, you could lose four of anything and you still have enough of the pieces to be able to put your data back in its original form. Okay. That means you could lose four disk drives, four servers, or if this data, if this, if this system was set up in three different sites, let's say that's one site, this is a second site, and this is a third site, mm -hmm. you could actually lose an entire site and yet still have enough of the pieces mm -hmm. to put your data back in its original form. So you get the, the significant levels of reliability over a traditional storage system, but you're not making copies. You're taking the data and okay. slicing it up and spreading it out. Okay. So there's there's one more parameter mm -hmm. that you have to set, which is very important, and that is what's called a write threshold. And let's say that's six in mm -hmm. this example. What that means is when you're writing data, when you're storing data, it's coming in and it's being dispersed across the network of storage nodes. You have to write a minimum number to say, I have enough data in case I want to read that back mm -hmm. to be able to reconstitute it. Remember, so the like minimum number is five, okay. so it's a quorum. What that means, especially in this kind of configuration, because you could have an entire site down, but mm -hmm. yet you still have access to six of your storage servers. That means you can continue to write data. Right. When this site comes back on, there's a process within an information dispersal system that figures out, hey, I'm missing some slices in this particular file or in this particular object. Mm -hmm. I need to go reconstitute those slices from the contents of the other slices that exist in the system. Okay. And it does that all in the background. Okay. So it's constantly trying to fill up and fill out to make right. sure that you're f at full width, what's called full width, which gives you the, your ultimate level of reliability. Okay, so I heard you say reliability. Can you kind of give us an overview then of, if, of the, the advantages then, uh, aside from reliability, of the dispersal um, process versus the traditional RAID sure. replication process? Sure, very easy. So mm -hmm. remember, we made three copies of the data on disk over here and put a fourth copy on tape. Right. So you're buying 3x the amount of storage that you need to store 1x of information. Plus tape. Right? plus tape. So mm -hmm. you, you have the, the fourth X plus tape. So mm -hmm. it's four X the amount of data. Just guess what? You probably have at least two or three X the amount of people to manage that, that, that data oh, sure. as well because it's a large environment, let's say. Mm -hmm. You may have some more network that you have to, uh, that you have, to have, two X of the network to keep things in sync, etc. Mm -hmm. You have to power and cool right. all of this storage. 3x that. I mean, when you get down to the bottom line, you're significantly more expensive okay. in this approach than you are in a dispersal approach. And, and by the way, this is one copy of the data. It's only a single instance of the data, but it gives you the levels of reliability that you're getting by making three copies on okay. disk and a fourth copy on tape. Okay. So significantly higher levels of reliability and availability. Wow. Okay. So it sounds like there's a, a lot of things that, that this architecture gives you. Really, the, the, the overall efficiency drives uh, a lot of, of what these benefits are. Then. Yeah, so, absolutely. Okay. And, and, and it's not magic. It's just right. mathematics. I mean, okay. if you remember, uh, you and I are roughly the same age. You uh -huh. may remember that uh, in, in high school you studied algebra, right? Mm -hmm. And what we're doing, what really information is doing, information dispersal is doing, is it's creating a set of equations with a set of unknowns. Mm -hmm. And once you have the same number of unknowns and the same number of equations, you can right. solve Simultaneous that. Simultaneous equations, you can solve right. That, okay. right? And so that's, cool. that's what your threshold is. Your threshold is the minimum number that you need of, nice. of equations and variables to be able to put the data back in its original form. So it's not magic, it's just mathematics. Nice, cool. Well, great, I, great explanation, Russ. I, I appreciate that. Um, this is Eric Slack, Senior Analyst with Story Switzerland, and thanks for tuning in.